Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, and I am your host. And today we're going to be talking about what happens when we need another round. This whole week we're going to be talking about sexual appetite and how just because um, one person may have a certain type of desire does not mean that the person that they're dealing with can necessarily match that desire. But there are things that we can do to manipulate it, okay? So, let me give everyone a chance to log on. It is Tuesday. And of course, if you have questions, concerns, comments, make sure you comment below. I kinda wanna put the cock ring so, I'm going to tell you the difference between all of this different stuff. Because, see, if you go on my website where it says sexual enhancers, you'll see all of this different stuff. This is the stuff that you'll see on the website where it says sexual enhancers. I'm going to set this to the side because I always, um, I, I just like to glance back and forth just to be able to see if there are any questions. So, sometimes when we're having sex, we're not going to say that the sex is bad sex, but sometimes we are left feeling like I could have really used another round. Some of us are having sex with people and they honestly have sex and they only do it one time. Meaning that once he didn't got him, sometimes she has gotten her, sometimes she's faking like she has gotten her, um... But what happens is, the way our bodies are set up as women, a lot of times men get them, but our car still warmed up. And see, what happens when you warm our car up, meaning our body, when you warm our bodies up, you good to go. You satisfied, but, but our engine hot, and it's ready to roll. Like, once our engine get hot, it's ready to, the car ready to drive, meaning that, we ready to go on and on and on and on and on. And a lot of times what happens is we're dealing with people and they getting them, they bodies are satisfied, but yet we ready to roll. So when you're dealing with sexual appetite, that means that this person at this point, now their body is being starved. Not saying that you didn't give all that you had. Not saying that you didn't do a great job. All I'm saying is, we still left wanting more. We can use another round, okay? A lot of times, naturally, men experience what's called a refractory period, especially when you're dealing with men in a certain age group. Some of y'all dealing with these little juvies who break in your back, and these little juvies, they can go round after round after round because they're still young. Shit, they got all the time and energy in the world. But when you start dealing with men in a 40 plus club, then we start dealing with what's called a refractory period. Refractory period is basically once that man comes, there's a time period before he can get an erection again. Some men, it might take them five, 10 minutes. Some men, it might take them 30 minutes to an hour. Some men can't get an erection again for another few days. And that means that you're dealing with some things that they don't have any control over, okay? Let's talk about these enhancements because these enhancements interrupt the refractory period. See, the thing is, I could go all day long talking about what all the women could take, but, and this is just assuming that we're doing female-male sex because when you're doing male-male sex, of course, you need, you have to penetrative sex. Let me say that because I have to specify when you're doing male-male penetrative sex, you need somebody with an erection. When you're doing female-male penetrative sex, you need somebody with an erection. If you're doing female-female, you don't necessarily have to have an erection because you could go out and purchase things that's going to work all the time. So you don't have those type of issues to worry about. But when we're dealing with the male anatomy, we have what's called cock rings. Cock rings slow up the blood circulation, 
so that he can maintain his erection. Now, if you ever seen a stripper dance, you saw him dancing with an erection. Most times he is wearing some sort of cock ring to maintain that erection. Even though he's not having sex, he can maintain the erection. We can still do that with our men. See, the thing is, we don't educate our men. So when we come to the bedroom with stuff like these cock rings, these are like rubber bands. They stretch. First thing I'll be, you ain't putting all that on me. Sweetheart, I purchased it because we need it. Because I would like our sex to continue longer. Then, in other words, it's okay for you to come, but I really would like for you to be able to get that erection or maintain that erection even after you ejaculate. See, when they wearing a cock ring, even when they come, they're not going to lose the erection. The erection is going to maintain as long as they're wearing a the cock ring. As long, I'm talking about they can come, but that thing going to stay up with the cock ring. Okay? We got these one-time use ones. These are just simple, stretchy, one-time use. When they get through with them, they can pull them off or cut them off. Put a little lubricant on them, slide them down to the base. It's going to help them maintain the erection. I have ever even seen men take these, stretch them, and double them up. Meaning you take this one and you stretch it so much that you wrap it around your dick two times. I've seen men do this, okay? So you have this type. Then you have the Ringo Wrangler which is a thicker cock ring, which is stretchy as well. But this one, you can use it multiple times. Now, I've seen a man, y'all, he came into the store because he could not find his cock ring. When he, came, when he pulled his wallet out and he went to pay for the cock ring, guess what he found? His cock ring. He had it in his wallet. So I'm saying all that to say this type is you can use it more than one time. Okay? Now, we have the metal ones. If you don't know how to measure for a metal cock ring, there is, um, I did a blog about it, and there should be some instructions on my website about how to measure to get the proper fit for a metal cock ring. But this particular pack has three different sizes. So if you don't necessarily know the size or the circumference of the dick, get the pack with the three because you can't go wrong, okay? So this is the metal cock ring. All of these do the same thing. Slow up the blood circulation so that he can maintain his erection. Even after he come, he can maintain his erection. That way you could get round two, you could get round three, you could get round four. Because at this point, he can keep up. Without this assistance, he can't keep up. Now, this is a way to do it without taking any enhancements. He could do this on his own. Suppose he does not want to wear the cock ring. We got... The honey. The honey is on my website. A lot of my older men like the honey. They like to put the honey in their coffee. Stir it around, just sweeten the coffee, but at the same time, it's going to be able to maintain that erection. Why does my honey pack look different? My honey pack is not the traditional goal because I spend a little bit more for my honey because I want the strongest honey on the market. So, you're not going to see bootleggers with this because a lot of times they have not even got on, like I deal directly with the manufacturer. So when I'm talking to them, I want the best on the market. I don't want the cheapest on the market. I want the best on the market. So the honey that I sell is the best on the market. It's stronger. Anybody that come in here, they'll tell me, Sharonda, your honey different. I know my honey different because I get the best on the market. Okay? So they can get the little honey or they can decide to do some of the other enhancers. Now, of course, kangaroo, three days. We all know the male kangaroo is three days. We got the rhino. Then we got the rhino CBD. Now, pay attention. This rhino pack got one in the pack. This rhino CBD, it got two in the pack. So that means you ain't got to come back as often. But again, this is going to give you another round. I'm tired of women complaining that they need more. And the thing is, you have to be able to express this to the people that you're dealing with, that you require more, that your body requires more. You got to be able to let them know about your sexual appetites and let them know, look, I like to have orgasms multiple times. It's no harm in saying that. 
it's no harm in saying I am multi-orgasmic. I like to have multiple orgasms. I need you to be able to keep up, to be able to satisfy my body. The woman that you dealt with before, she might have been all right with your one hit or quitter, but I need more. You got to be able to have these type of conversations. Rhino 69. Now, people love the liquid because when they're on the way to get that pussy, they can drink this, and by the time they get there, it's good. The liquid works real fast in the system, whereas with the pills, it takes a little bit longer to break down in the system. They'll, they'll drink this uh, liquid. By the time they get to their destination, they get ready to do what they do, okay? A lot of people don't like taking pills. You got the liquid, so you got different ways to get the job done. It's no reason that you should be left uh, you should be left feeling like you're not satisfied sexually. It's no reason because they got too much stuff on the market. Now, suppose you got a man who dropping dick left and right, left and right, and bitch, you can't keep up. They got shit out here on the market for women that cannot keep up. It's okay to say, you know what? He go round after round in my body. After I get one orgasm, my body is satisfied. So being in my body satisfied, I'm no longer interested anymore. Yes, I recommend you drink the whole bottle of liquid to get the, the desired effect that you're looking for. That was one of the questions that was asked. And do they drink the whole bottle? Yes, they drink the whole bottle. So again, if you one of them people who once you have the orgasm, your body is satisfied and all of a sudden mentally you're no longer interested in sex, because your body got what it needed, because your body does not have like a strong sexual appetite, and as long as you get you one good little nut, you good, and you don't need any more, but he want more, and he want multiple rounds, and he want to lay up in the pussy all night long, he don't really necessarily want to do quickens and all of this shit, because he like, he like extended sex, and you need to be able to keep up, we got the kangaroo for you, three days. We got the juicy as fuck. We got the pink pussy cat. People say, well, what's the difference? What's the difference between gain and tide? It's all washing power. It's about preference and what you like. Then we got the CBD one, which is really popular right now because this one not only gives you that uh, feeling of desiring to want sex, but it also helps to relax you. Especially when y'all dealing with these men, these men with real, real, real big dicks, and you need that vaginal canal to relax, so that you can take all of it, get you the one with the CBD. If you got dick appointment on the way and you need to get yourself right before you get there, you get the liquid too. That way when you get there, you ready. It's already in your system. So again, there's no reason that we should be experiencing one round and we can't get all that we need out of the sexual experience because they got too much stuff on the market. I know me personally, I'm, I'm going to need to bust, oh, I, let me tell you, I'm, I'm multi-orgasmic, but I, I need, I don't want to stop until the point of my body is exhausted. Like, when I'm exhausted and I can't go no more and I just can't do nothing and I'm helpless, that's when I want it to be over. But as long as I'm up and I got energy and I'm going and you ain't going to drain me dry, you got to drain me dry in order for my body to be satisfied. That's why it's important for you to deal with people that you are sexually compatible with, that know what to do for your body. Because when you in these little short-term relationships, and there's nothing wrong with dating and, and having sex with different multiple people, because I don't slut shame or, or nothing like that. Like, you live your life, have as many dicks as you want in a day. Like, do you. But you can't expect for those people to necessarily know your body. When you start dealing with somebody on a consistent basis and y'all are learning how to, you know, deal with each other sexually, then you can expect a better result. Now, some people saying, well, Sharonda, I've been married to my husband 15, 16 years, and he still don't know what I like. That's because you're not communicating what you like. There's no way you could be in a relationship with somebody that amount of time and you're not satisfied sexually, and they don't know it. If they don't know that they're not satisfying you sexually, it's because you are not communicating effectively with them, letting them know that you're throwing the ball, but you ain't hitting the target. 
I require a little bit more. When I get through having sex with you, a lot of times I got to go get my bullet and go in the bathroom and finish myself off. You got to have them conversations. Are they hard conversations? Yes, they are hard conversations. But it's nothing wrong with telling the person, look, I require more. That don't sound bad. That's not offensive. It's being honest and saying, I require more. My body requires more. I require a different type of stimulation to get off. I like multiple types of stimulation. Yes, I love the stimulation from the penetration, but I like head too. And I like my bullet too. And I like all of, and I like it when you in the pussy and I need you to play with my ass too. You got to know your body so well and what it is that you like to the point that you can communicate that to the person that you're dealing with. Because if you can't give them direction concerning you, because you don't know, then how can you expect them just to walk in and just please you? So again, if you one of them people who one round just ain't enough, you need to come in and you need to get some help for the person that you're dealing with. Or if you know that you're one of them people they got a man with a real strong sexual appetite and you know you can't keep up with him, come get you some shit to help you keep up with him. Okay? All right. So that's going to wrap up my topic today. Uh, today is World AIDS Day. World, the reason I'm always really compassionate about these type of um, awareness days is because I know that the topic of talking about AIDS and HIV, it has come a long way. I had a parent, my dad, who actually died of AIDS. He didn't die of HIV. He actually died of AIDS. And it was during a time where they did not have half of the research that they have today. They didn't have half of the medications that they have today, the education that they had today. And basically back then when you got HIV AIDS, it was a death sentence and your family had to just watch you die. And I remember when he passed, you know, because this people, and even today it's still a certain stigma and a certain shame that is attached to dying from the virus. And I remember when he died and people were saying, you know, well, what happened? They were saying, oh, well, he had kidney failure because they didn't want to put that out there in the atmosphere that he actually, you know, had the, the not the HIV virus. He actually had the AIDS virus. So, World AIDS Day is basically recognizing the people who have died from AIDS, people like my dad, and also bringing up the conversation because we got way more uh, education about AIDS and HIV than we ever had before. So, it's just a way to bring recognition to the virus. So, today is December 1st, which is World AIDS Day, and the last thing that I want to say is there was a young lady um, in the group on yesterday and she put up a comment and I didn't comment yesterday because a lot of times before I just say something or go into depth about something, sometimes I like to meditate because if I give counsel, I like to give wise counsel. And her, her, her comment was, I... Basically, I haven't talked to God in about four months. I'm tired of praying, and basically, I'm not seeing anything change in my life. And basically, almost like as if her faith is being weakened because she feel like God not moving in the time that she want him to move. And that comment, it weighed on me all day. just kept coming back across my mind over and over on yesterday her particular comment and this morning i woke up and i just want to share something with you in order for god to move in your life sometimes you have to one have a spirit of gratitude and we say well god is not doing anything in our life but i want to let you know yes he is he is doing things in your life because he woke you up today and gave you a whole nother another day an opportunity to do something so he did something by waking you up okay so my next thing is when we're praying 
and we're asking God for things, and there's nothing wrong with, with asking God for things and to move in your life, but you have to also hold yourself accountable and say, what am I doing different in my life for God to move? Am I meditating on the goodness and the things that he's already done for me? Did he ask me to remove certain things and people from my life and they still exist? Because a lot of times God can't move for you when you're not doing nothing different. We have to ask ourselves in order for change to happen, what have we changed about ourselves? What are we doing different? Are there any sacrifices that we are making? You, you got to understand that in order for him to work, you got to give him something to work with. So if you're waking up every day and your prayer life is the same, and you're waking up every day and your routine is the same, you waking up every day and you are not doing anything different in your life, you can't expect to see anything different happen in your life. I recommend not only a prayer life, but I recommend that you take some time and do some deep meditating. Prayer and meditating are two completely different things, okay? I need you to meditate on some of the goodness that he's done in your life. Meditate on his goodness. Because if you up and you able to get on Facebook... You're a lot fortunate than somebody else because somebody else ain't even got a phone to be able to put a message to be able to say that they feel like God ain't even working for them. So take this time and meditate on his goodness. Meditate on the things that he has done. Even if it means, even if it means sometimes you have to separate yourself from certain things and people and situation, be obedient. And take a break from certain things. Because I was talking to my husband. I was talking to my husband. And one thing that I can honestly say is when you meditate and you can't hear God in the midst of all kinds of stuff going on around you. When I'm meditating, every morning I get up and I meditate. Every morning I get up and I pray with my husband, but I also meditate. When I meditate, I got to turn everything off. Every TV in the house got to be off. Everything has to be off because I can't meditate on his goodness and I got distractions all around me. I can't hear him talk to me and deal with me if I got distractions all around me. So sometimes you got to just put yourself and people, old people say get in your uh, prayer closet. A lot of times it's not necessarily a closet per se. But just get into you a quiet place and just think on his goodness. Meditate is just another way of saying thinking. Just think on his goodness. And if you, even if you can't say, number, Lord, thank you for waking me up today, you just say it over and over. Lord, thank you for waking me up today. I just thank you for another opportunity. I thank you for another chance to be able to do it all over again. I thank you for the small things. Because in order for me to prepare myself for the big things, I got to thank you for the small things. Don't despise small beginnings. You got to start from somewhere. So, God laid that on my heart to share with you. He has not abandoned you. He has not left you. He has not forgotten about you. 